everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I thought I would talk about something that I get asked about quite a lot and that is how I change my watercolour illustrations into digital files that I can then send to clients or get printed or made into products. I'm just going to be talking through my very basic knowledge of Photoshop and how I edit my illustrations so they stay as true to the original as possible and they look really good. If you've seen my previous video, you'll have seen me working on these watercolours and they're going to be used on my wedding invitations. So now that I've finished the artwork, I need to scan them into my computer. Now the scanner that I use is the Canoscan 210 from Canon and I've used this type of scanner for years, I have no problems with it, it's a really good price as well so I really recommend it. So here I am plugging my scanner into my laptop which is what I use to edit all of my illustrations because I have Photoshop downloaded onto it. So to use the scanner you just need to get the artwork, there it is, and put it face down onto the scanning bed and the scanner actually has little markers which show you where to place it and then you just close the lid and press scan. So when I open my scanner on my computer it automatically shows the overview. So now it's time to choose the resolution and in this instance I've gone with 400 dpi just because the artwork was painted at the size that it's going to be printed. So I want to give myself the option of if I need to size up the artwork I won't lose any of the quality because it's been scanned at a high resolution. Here I am opening the artwork into Photoshop. I'm going to turn it around so it's the right way around and then I'm going to use the magnetic lasso tool to cut the artwork out and cut it from its textured paper background. I know that you could also use the magic wand tool here. Um, I've had that suggested to me a few times but that doesn't usually work for me because with watercolour you have kind of undefined edges and I just find that the magic wand doesn't always cut to the edge of my illustration, it will cut into my illustration. So I have to use a more long-winded way of going around it with the magnetic lasso tool but I just think it's worth it in the end to be more precise. So now I'm opening up a new document and it's going to be A4 in size and it's also going to be CMYK rather than RGB because that's the correct mode for printing. Here I am copying and pasting the artwork into this new document so it's all been cut out and now I can resize it. Now what I'm doing is using the lasso tool again and I'm cutting out all of the paper in between all the bits and pieces in this artwork so in between all the leaves just cutting out all of the shapes to get rid of that textured paper. This is going to take quite a long time with this leaf because it's got all these different holes so I'm just going around and cutting out all the different holes but I think it's worth it because it's going to make the invitations look much cleaner and there's not going to be kind of like murky watercolour paper texture. As you can see as I'm cutting them out and then deleting that shape they become much brighter and whiter. So now I've cut out all of the bits and pieces on this artwork, I'm just looking to see if I've got any nicks, which sometimes happens with using the magnetic lasso tool. I'll get these little nicks in the painting, not sure why that happens. So I just use the rubber tool and then I go and smooth out those nicks. Um, if anyone knows why that might happen, then please do let me know, but I think it's just what happens when you cut out your artwork sometimes the magnetic lasso tool makes a mistake and you have to go back and just smooth out the edges a little bit. Now it is time to make some edits to the colour and the contrast and the levels. So I usually go into levels first and I'll, um, oh bloody hell, I can't explain this. I use levels to make the shadows of a piece and also the highlights of a piece a bit more pronounced and I just find that it makes it a more defined image and then I go into the contrast as well and that does a similar thing for me it just kind of creates more contrast between the light and the dark. Just as a disclaimer in case you hadn't already noticed I'm in no way an expert on using Photoshop I just use it for the very specific needs that I have and I'm not very good at explaining exactly what each uh, adjustment does but as you can see, it kind of works out, it improves the image, so I'm just increasing the saturation because that can be lost a little bit when you scan paintings. And you can see here that I use preview to check before and after and just make sure that I'm not over-exaggerating the edits that I'm making. And then I use the burn tool and I will usually use this to go into um, 
some of the sh some of the some of the shadowy areas of a piece like I'm using it on all of the overlapping leaves on this piece just to um, create a bit more depth so the shadows are a bit more exaggerated so you understand that these stems are behind the leaves um, I just think it's a more precise way of exaggerating some of the darker areas in an illustration without having to exaggerate every single um, area of darkness you can be more precise now we've gone back to the original scanned artwork and I'm going to cut out the other painting before we go any further I think I need to explain the layout of these invitations so it's going to be an open out card and the artwork is on either side so when I show this to my printers it's going to have to be laid out how I want to fold it so with the artwork on either side so then it can be folded in like so so I've copied and pasted the artwork onto the other side of the A4 document that I've made and now it's time to resize and reposition then I will start making the same color corrections that I made with the other piece of artwork so again I'm adjusting the levels and then I'm going to adjust the contrast and then I'm doing something a little bit different this time I'm going into colour balance and adjusting the colours of this piece because I wasn't quite happy with how they were just making some small adjustments adding more yellow, more green and then the shadows have more blue in them I actually ended up going back and changing the colour balance again, adding more red and more yellow so it matched up with the other piece a bit more. Then I'm using the burn tool again and I'm changing the mid-tones of this piece, adding a bit more depth on these leaves. And that was about it. I made a few more edits, just tweaked things a little bit and then I saved this file as a TIFF file and sent it to my printers ready to be made into invites. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try and answer them. And I will also keep you updated on the process of getting these invitations made. And I'll show you what they look like when they're properly finished and printed. Please do share this video if you found it helpful and subscribe if you're new because I make two videos a week on illustration and watercolors. I upload on Tuesday and Saturday. So thanks again for tuning in to watch my videos and I will speak to you again soon. Bye.